On the banks of the river Weser in northern Germany, there was a beautiful town called Hamlin. The town was surrounded by a lush green forest. It was very clean, and the people lived a happy, peaceful life. One day, their peace was shattered when they woke up to find the city filled with huge, ugly, dangerous rats. There were rats in every nook and cranny of Hamlin. Rats in the wheat silos, rats in the bakeries, rats in the shops, rats in the streets, and there were even rats in the houses. Everybody had rats on their minds. People tried everything to get rid of the rats, but their effort was in vain. The rats kept growing in numbers. They terrorized the people of the town and made their lives miserable. The people of Hamlin went to the king and pleaded with him to do something about the rats. The king appeared on the balcony in his finery and announced that. Whoever could rid the village of rats would get one thousand gold coins as a reward. Time passed, but no one managed to take the king up on his offer. One day, a stranger arrived in Hamlin. He looked very different than everyone. He wore colorful clothes and a hat covered with feathers and shells. And on the end of his long scarf, there hung a silver flute. He seemed to have come from many places. Walking along the streets, he saw a note hung up on a tree. It read, "Anyone who can free the town of Hamlin from rats will get one thousand gold coins from the king." The stranger went to the king and told him. For one thousand gold coins, I will get rid of those rats from Hamlin. The king enthusiastically agreed. The stranger took a deep breath and blew on his silver flute. Out came the sweetest melody that anyone in Hamlin had ever heard. The huge rats of Hamlin were especially enchanted. And started following the stranger as if they were under a musical spell. The children loved this stranger and gave him a name: the Pied Piper. The Pied Piper led the rats into the river, where they drowned. And only when the last one had disappeared beneath the waters of the Weser River, did the Pied Piper stop playing. He decided to go to the king and ask for his reward. But when the Pied Piper asked for his one thousand gold coins, the king refused to pay him. The king declared that the rats had drowned themselves, and that the piper had done nothing. Everyone laughed at the Pied Piper as he walked quietly out of town. Everyone in Hamlin forgot about the rats, and life went back to normal. Until one day, beautiful music was heard once again. No sooner did this music reach their ears, but all the people of Hamlin fell into a deep slumber. The music had enchanted everyone, except the children. The children were happy to see their very own Pied Piper once again. They ran out of their houses and followed him. The Pied Piper led the children towards a mountain. As they arrived, a small door appeared on the side of the mountain, and the children went in. The door shut behind them. Meanwhile, back in Hamlin, the people awoke from their deep sleep. And found that their children were missing. The king's only son, the prince, was also missing. The king knew at once that it must be the work of none other than the Pied Piper. The citizens of Hamlin agreed. Everyone regretted not keeping their promise to him. 
The king led the people up the mountain to find the Pied Piper and the children. After a long search, they found the secret door. Inside the mountain, there was a meadow, and all the children were jumping and playing happily with the Pied Piper. The king and his subjects begged him for forgiveness. They gave him his one thousand gold coins and offered him a place to stay in town. The Pied Piper released the children, but refused to accept their offer. He warned the people of Hamlin never to be ungrateful and greedy again.